In this problem, there is mass attached with a spring to a wall, and this mass has friction between it and the bottom surface. And we're asked to determine um, how long it takes for this mass to come to a complete stop if we apply an initial displacement of one meter from the equilibrium position. So the first thing we need to do is, like always, draw a free body diagram. and um, of the block and apply all of the forces. So we have the block and we have x in this direction. So we have the force of friction pulling back and the force due to the spring pulling back. Or I'll call this fk. And then we have um, normal force, and we have mg. Okay, so this is a free body diagram and we can get the equation of motion um, by doing a sum of forces in the x and in the y direction. So in the x direction we have f of f uh, plus fk is going to be or minus, they're both in the negative x direction. Negative ff minus fk to m x double dot. And so this um, we get m x double dot plus uh, mu m g uh, plus k x is equal to zero. This is essentially plugging in mu m g into um, the force of friction and kx into fk. Okay, and this mg comes from n, which is mg because if we do a sum of forces in the y, that's what we get. Okay, so when we solve this equation here, um, the solution that um, we get is going to be um, in this in the following form. X of t is equal to x naught minus 2n minus 1 mu mg over k times cosine of omega n t plus mu mg over k times negative 1 to the n plus 1. Okay, uh, and this is n represents every peak. Okay, um, so essentially what this equation looks like is this. I'll draw it out here. So it starts over here and then it sinusoidally decreases like that. Okay, so this is the first peak, we have a second peak, and we have a third, and we have a fourth, and we have a fifth. Okay, and essentially at the peak is when um, we get a change in direction. Um, so when the, the mass t instantly stops and then starts moving backwards. Okay, um, so what we need to determine is how many peaks are required for this system to stop. So you displace by one meter, so you add an x of one meter, and then this thing is going to start oscillating back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And we need to determine when it stops oscillating. So we know that um, at the point, at each of these peaks here, um, what happens is a change of direction, so the mass has to temporarily stop. And that is where we have static friction, okay? So once we get static friction that is higher, um, so the force due to the static friction is higher um, than um, the spring force, um, then what happens is the block doesn't move anymore because friction, because the force of the spring is overcome by the friction, which is static friction, so it's stationary. Okay, so 
um, what we need to determine is how many of these peaks, so how many ends are required for this whole system to stop. And that is based on the force of friction. Okay, so we have um, the following uh, statement. Um, F of F has to be bigger than F K. Okay. And so we have to stop at a peak because at this peak is where we have this static friction. Um, and um, so what we need to do is plug in the values for these. Um, so the force of friction, F of F, is just mu mg. And it has to be bigger than Fk. And Fk is just kx, right? So k times this x term here. So k times x of t. And I take the absolute value because sometimes this can be a negative force depending on the direction. Um, so if you take the, we, we just care about the absolute value, not um, the actual value. Okay. So we can see from this solution here. So this, I just solved this differential equation. Um, I'm not going to solve it here, but if you just go online, you can solve it and you'll get this this form. We have x naught, which is the initial displacement. Um, then we have this term over here, um, which is all multiplied by cosine of omega t. And then we have this mu term here, and we have this exponent here um, because of the directionality of uh, friction. Okay, so we have this equation. We can plug in this x of t into here. Um, and we can rearrange, and we get the following. So mu mg over k has to be bigger than the absolute value of x naught minus mu mg over k times 2n minus 1 of cosine of omega n t plus z, uh, mu m g over k negative 1 to the n plus 1. Okay, and uh, again, absolute value. All right, so now that we have this, we can Try, we need to get rid of this absolute value and simplify this equation to solve for n. Okay, so uh, what we need to do is we first um, are going to plug in some values um, to get numbers instead of uh, all of these um, constants. Okay, so mu mg over k, we can simplify that to um, 0 0.04905. Okay. And that's going to have to be bigger than um, x naught. We can simplify the above equation um, to the following, and I'll explain how to do it. Minus um, 0 0.04905, uh, 2n minus 2. OK, so we can simplify the following, this equation here, into this one. So first thing we do is wherever there's mu mg over k, we plug in the values and we get the following here and here. Okay, now we can get this here um, is minus 1, right? But if we get rid of this absolute value, this here is always um, going to be positive. Um, so that's why um, we're going to subtract, since this is negative here, we're going to subtract another one. So that's why we get negative minus 2. Okay, so we included this term with this because of the absolute value. Um, and then this x naught can just be pulled out um, of the absolute value. Um, and um, this cosine of omega n t here, um, we are going to um, pull that out because that's just going to be equal to 1. Okay, because we're looking at a peak, uh, the cosine at a peak is always 1. Um, so that's why this becomes just becomes 1. So it should be multiplied into this term here, um, like to this whole term here, but this becomes 1, so that's why we can also include this into there. Okay, um, so we get um, the following, and here we can solve for um, n. 
okay, because we are given an x naught um, and we can solve for n. So here we have um, n, so we have x naught is equal to um, 1 meter. We get that n is equal to 11. Okay, so we need 11 n's, but 1 n is half a cycle. So that's why this will be five full cycles. Let me write that better. So we need 11 ends, but that's five full periods or five full cycles. And um, therefore, um, once to find out the time, we can plug everything into this cosine here, which um, we can plug everything here, which this cosine needs to be equal to 1. Um, so this omega nt here has to be equal to 10 times pi, right? So that this whole cosine term becomes 1. Um, so we have uh, omega nt is equal to uh, 10 pi because that is 5 periods, 10 pi. Um, and that will yield this cosine to be 1. Um, so we need to find omega n, and omega n is simply um, root k over m. So square root of k over m, which is equal to the square root of 40 uh, radians per second. And so we can get t is equal to 10 pi over square root of 40 seconds. And that is the final answer for this problem.